My guest on the syllabus today is a prominent face who usually leaves you spellbound with his captivating performance on the silver screen. Um, we all know him as that fine actor and he doesn't hesitate to let people know that outside acting, he usually lives a boring life. So it came as a surprise when I found out he's into this business. Well, let's welcome the finest Molly Gavo. <laughs> Good to have you, Molly. Thank you, thank you. How's it going? Ah, I'm good. Yourself? This is your introduction, no easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I had, I had a, 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 a list of accolades, but then we'll make do with that one. Okay. Maybe, maybe. I'll we'll let them know. We'll add some more later. Yeah, I like it. I like definitely. It. I like it. Thank you for having me. Ah, it's good to always have you here. And thanks for making time for us, too. Absolutely. But when you hear the name Molly Gavo, uh -huh. it always comes across as that, I mean, a professional, but quite reserved. Fair. So when I, I used this, I mean, Ringway. Quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I saw the building. I was like, oh, it's a nice building. Let yes. me find out. I had Play Club and then I had something like Lupita. Yes. yes. I went to read about it and I was told, okay, Molly Gavo is the CEO. I was like, wow, Molly Gavo into nightlife business. It, it, it's, That's it's, strange. It's incredible, isn't it? Very. Yeah, life is random very. like that sometimes. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when considering your, as you put it, boring life. Uh-huh. Outside acting, outside yes. TV presenting. Yes. Why nightlife business? Wow. Um, I don't think I would say it was, it was actually why nightlife. I, I didn't necessarily just pick nightlife. Um, my background is in finance. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much what I studied my entire life. Mm -hmm. The acting just came later on. Yeah. So I sort of fell into acting. It just happened to be something that I, I happened to be good at and I happened to be blessed enough that my career went in a particular way. So that was never really the plan. Okay. Um, the plan was always to either be in business or just to run my own businesses. The acting just came and it, by God's grace, it went well. Um, awesome. Which meant that after a while, I was living in Nigeria for five, six years. Yeah. And that meant that I had already done, let me say, all the things that I personally would have liked to achieve over there. I had already done all the big films. I had already done all the things, which meant that it was time to sort of go back to yeah. um, where I was originally from. Not necessarily leave the acting, but mm -hmm. find a way to merge the two, the, the two of them. I'd always been running my own businesses, but the acting, I won't lie, for five years, it was, because it, it, it took off and it was big yeah. and I was running around doing all sorts of things. So it felt like a good time to come home and sort of set up some roots. Yeah. So that was what informed the whole decision. After five years in Nigeria, um, I came and I partnered with some incredible people and we decided to just put up, I guess, this... this uh, Magnificent. This, this whole thing, yeah. yes. But it wasn't, it, it wasn't like I just woke up myself and I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I, I personally don't believe you can do anything by yourself. So, collaboration yes absolutely yeah. and that's the one thing i learned working in nigeria um because play in itself yeah. is an already existing brand it exists okay. in nigeria already okay. so okay. my partner charles Opalike already had the the network going in nigeria mm -hmm. we just collaborated on the ghana element which meant that this is this is the one that i own not not the other ones per se okay. but like i said it's not just me it's me and a couple of amazing people and we've been able to we tried our best we, we wanted to do something big something grand something different and uh see how we can go into it. You say, why nightlife? Yeah. And I always tell people that the only reason was you have to study every market that you're going to get into. Definitely. Do and, that decide, and decide mm -hmm. what's best for you. In Ghana, we don't have that many options. In Nigeria, we have cinemas, we have museums, we have parks, we have beach fronts, we have all sorts of things that yeah. we're still trying to get, get to in Ghana. The two biggest things in Ghana are either um, drinking or eating, either restaurants or some sort of nightlife behavior. So we did both. We set up a restaurant, which is Lupita, and then we set up Play Ghana, which is a nightclub, just as a way to fit into what the market already has for us. Yeah. But that being said, we're not stopping here. We're still going to bring other things that the market doesn't have. Mm -hmm. But before you enter a market, at least do what, do what the market already so, allows, yeah. and then you can grow from there. So Definitely. long and short, that's, that's, how, that's how I ended up here. So how will you describe business so far? Like I said, by God's grace, it's been, um, it's been incredible. We've been open for about six, six months, six, seven okay. months, and we've been able to do more than what people would have done in two, three years. So for us, we feel very blessed for the way mm -hmm. that we were able to start out. Um, I personally believe that if, if something is meant to happen for you, they say waiting for you, no, you never go for you lose. Loss, yeah. You understand. Yeah. So if it just happens to be the way that God wanted it to be, that's how it's going to mm -hmm. go. There's nobody who can stop that. Okay. And that's what happened with my acting career. I went to Nigeria for two weeks and I ended up staying for five years. Wow. I, I thought I was going for two weeks and I mm -hmm. ended up staying for five years. So we built this and um, we didn't know how it was going to go. Yeah. God was super, super 
gracious with us and we had an incredible launch we in december you can see all the videos and yeah. everything it was fantastic and since then we've been moving forward steadily so we're happy that it's taking off we've only been open for a few months so at the end of the day wherever we are we're grateful for it awesome so what actually goes on here at the play club is it just come party or there are other activities that you know spice up the place yes yes um so when it comes to play the the brand in itself which like i said is, is beyond just the the club in yeah. ghana the brand in itself embodies the let me say the it's supposed to be aspirational okay. it's supposed to be a place where no matter what you have whether you have money you don't have money whether you're rich whether you're already successful as long as you have it inside you mm -hmm. that you want to do something with your life this is a place where people are supposed to gather and sort of share those ideas yeah. network see how we can do business together and everything so the network in itself just tries to bring together like-minded people people who are african who are trying to do amazing things and then figure out how we can all get together yeah. we just use fun and the nightlife and the entertainment part as a as an avenue for all of those things to happen so it is okay. a club yes and we okay. do have fun over here but the primary point is to just bring like-minded people and do things in a completely different way which is why our events are things that have never been done before in ghana mm -hmm. we have our casino net we have our fight night which again never the been box done and before. Bouts and all exactly that. Never, yeah. been, never been done before in ghana so we're more focused on providing experiences that haven't been seen before as opposed to just coming to a party and do nightlife which is of course part of the the equation that's nice i mean talking about the boxing bout i think i i find that interesting mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken that's actually a first in ghana yes it is yes, yeah and yes. it's inside the club not like yes. outside no 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 we set it up inside so that's it's it's a unique experience yeah. so for people to have a different kind of nightlife experience separate from what they're used to mm -hmm. so we set up the entire boxing ring we have professional boxes we have professional referees um coaches everything it's it, it's a completely uh top-notch event if i do say so myself uh, i hope i hope i witness that one day no no, no. you're definitely invited for the next one <laughs> thank um, you we, we would i'll love be to here. have you and your team definitely Please come through definitely. and then we'll, we'll give I'll you a here. session I'll and you can see it for yourself i'll be here so i think um let, let's just touch a bit on the boxing industry sure, sure. in this country how has that in your to the benefit of the boxing industry um, do you do you avail some of these talents to other investors and the likes what has the networking been like I'm so actually, far? I'm actually super glad that you asked that question because <laughs> for the most part, the, the entire point, like I said, it's, it's more than the nightclub business. Yeah. It, it's more than a club. It's supposed to be something that has actual impact on the society. Yeah. So after we finish jamming, what happens after that? After mm -hmm. the bottle popping and after the drinking, what happens after that? And Fight Night is one of the, the ways that we show that we are more than just a, a, a jamming center. Yeah. The whole point is actually to find ways for these, they're not kids per se, but the, the youth, um, who, let's be real, they're not so privileged. Yeah. Um, so we find ways that they're able to connect with an audience that they normally would not have connected with. So it's a very high profile event. It's a very, uh, we try to put together as many like-minded successful people who can mm. come and see these talents yeah. and also figure out how they can also be of support to these talents. So when we're done with them, we try to give them, I wouldn't say prizes, but ways that they can help themselves, health memberships, okay. um, healthcare, um, uh, insurance we try to try to offer them some financial mm -hmm. support and whatnot but the whole point is that these young people who usually would not have had this kind of audience we give them a platform where they can showcase the, them, themselves to the world in a different way and hopefully um rise up and become better like i said these aren't things that we started in ghana we've yeah. already been doing so in nigeria for instance fight night has produced world champions Fight Night has produced people who started from fighting in the club, yeah. but they were able to showcase their talents to a different audience, and that also elevated them. And now they went on to do different things, and now they're actually um, fighting professionally on, um, on the world stage. Yeah. So the whole point is to move beyond the nightlife establishment and to see how we can also impact people yeah. through our jamming and through our fun and through our um, networking. So yeah. that is pretty much the point of Fight Night. We are hoping to be a positive force in the Ghanaian boxing space yeah. because we have all this talent mm -hmm. and not enough people are pushing to put this talent where they're supposed to be yeah um, people are trying we're not the first people to come and try to help Ghana Ghanaian boxing there's Definitely. people doing some incredible things yeah. out there we just wanted to be a part of the effort see whatever small way that we can to also help push these boxes and elevate their platform and so far 
it's been um, pretty great. We gather all these corporate bodies over here to come and see these people, and they mm -hmm. always find ways to support these kids. Awesome. Um, give them free vacation stays for their mm -hmm. families and different resorts. Things that normally they might not have had access to, yeah. but based on these kinds of things, they find ways to elevate themselves and, hey, maybe in a few years, they'll be rich enough that I mean, that's they, some great they will stuff. also give me money. Yeah, that's some great yes. stuff. Um, let's talk about starting Play Club Ghana. Okay. Setting up a business in Ghana. How was the experience? Was it a frustrator? <laughs> Are you sure you want to talk about? <laughs> I, I really do because, I mean, I'm, I'm, we, we've had countless stories oh, from man. diasporans and even natives who oh, talk about man. the frustration they have to go through in oh, order to man. set up. How was the experience like for you? Setting up a business in Ghana? Yeah. I'm going to need like three hours <laughs> to talk about. Um, it's very strange, I won't lie. Mm. Ghana isn't very... Uh, we don't provide the kind of fertile ground that you that you would need to sort of come in and, and flourish as a business, especially as young business owners yeah. who are just trying to, to, to make it. It's not like I have unlimited money or anything. Mm -hmm. So I won't lie, Ghana is not that hospitable in that way. Yeah. However, if you can find a way to persevere through those obstacles, then the business opportunities are immense and they're great. So I'm not going to lie and say, oh, it's easy. You can just breeze in yeah. and do whatever you want. But if you can just persevere, um, the results are amazing. I'll give you a practical example. When we started building this place, uh, I started when dollar was one is to six. Mm -hmm. And we spent a few months building this space. I started when dollar was one is to six. When I finished building, dollar was one is to 14.6. Mm -hmm. So I started from one is to six, ended at one is to 14.6. Which means that whatever I was using to buy $10,000 back in the day, now I'm Everything having to use to, more yeah. than double yeah. to buy that same $10,000 which is absolutely insane and you wouldn't find that in a lot of places and mm -hmm. for the most part usually that would cripple any business plan yeah. i'm I, like i said i didn't do it alone so i was fortunate to have the kind of partners who were resilient um, my partners from nigeria charles of play my partners from ghana mm. james and eleanor all the other people who um eleanor dabla james Ghana, the people who i actually worked with everybody found ways to come together and push through and make sure that it actually happened. That's so nice. I, I, I will not lie and say it was easy. Yeah. It was the farthest thing from easy. Building, you have people oh. who are fighting you, you're clashing with traditional authorities, yeah. you're clashing with all sorts of different bodies who want money from you for all, all sorts of different things. But at the end of the day, like I said, if you're IRED, there's nothing, there's nothing that's, yeah. that, that's impossible. So that was more my lesson from this. I mean, because one would think that being a celebrity, you could have leveraged on that traction and, you know, gained some favors favors in court, let me say. But, I mean, with all these issues that you outlined, mm -hmm. that means it's real out there. Hey, I mean, let's be real, man. They even, no matter how celebrity is celebrity, <laughs> there's some things that not even celebrity is going is gonna, yeah, gonna gonna to help you with. Yeah. Yes, the, the system true. is the system. So it's up to whether you have that tenacity, whether you're a celebrity or not, to, mm -hmm. to push forward and make it through. So we were fortunate that we didn't give up. I won't lie. I'm all, for your cost to more than double when you're mm -hmm. building something mm -hmm. is very discouraging. But yeah. we managed to push through and here we are now. We survived and we're thriving. So we thank God. I think you, you, you tend to spend more time in Nigeria than in Ghana, right? That was the case previously, yes. Okay, but it has changed. Um, so now obviously I'm married yeah. and I have a baby now. Mm -hmm. So um, my priorities are a little different. Congrats um, on that one, thank too. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Back then, I, I, I was able to, my time was completely mine. So I can jet off to Jamaica for two months mm -hmm. to do something. or go to Barbados to shoot or go to Kenya, go to Nigeria, go everywhere. I was able to do those things very easily. Um, now it's not so easy. I have a wife and a baby yeah, to consider. To Unfortunately, my wife is amazing. She finds ways to be supportive no matter what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was in Nigeria for five, six years, like full time. I was living yeah. there full time. So I, I paid my dues to that side yeah. of things already. So now I do both. Um, I'm in and out. When I need to be in Nigeria, I'm there for whatever period. When I need to be in Ghana, I'm here for whatever period. We spend some time in Dubai. Um, my wife is Austrian, so mm -hmm. we have to spend some time in Austria as well sometimes. So now I, it depends on what life, what life uh, so demands. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and then and then I can now say, okay, this is what's happening. So Nigeria is still, Nigeria is my second home. Okay. That one I will never be able to go behind. What mm -hmm. Nigerians did for me yeah. by allowing me to be a part of their family, I don't think I'll ever be able to 
repay or forget. I mean, <laughs> so. I mean, I've watched some interviews of yours and people struggle to, I mean, they go like, okay, Ghanaian, Nollywood actor, Nollywood. That's crazy. I yeah, mean, yeah, that yeah. description. <laughs> so I know you stayed in America. Yes. Yeah. I think you schooled there. Yes, I went to, I mm -hmm. went to school. You're, yes. you're Ghanaian and you've also worked in Nigeria. Yes. So moving through these three countries, what are some of the culture shocks you've experienced and how has it benefited you in running a business like this? Um, <laughs> I won't lie, being, being able to spend time in different mm -hmm. places definitely, I would say, made me who I am. Because one of the things that you, you, I personally would always encourage people to do is to travel. Not necessarily, it's not about America or Europe per se, but to go outside of your own borders yeah. just to be able to see that it's a big world out there mm -hmm. and we're not all the same. Yeah. So it's impossible that we're all going to think the same. It's impossible that we're all going to share the same values. It's simply never going to happen. And the more you realize that other people are in this world and other people are different, the easier it becomes to either survive in different spaces or to be more understanding of, 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 of things and, mm -hmm. and people because we're not all going to be the same. Um, so living in America, for instance, I find it fascinating because when I was, when I was in uni there, it wasn't cool to be African. Oh. So mm -hmm. you would have even black Americans who were claiming that they would fight you that, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not African, man, like yeah. I'm American. It would go back and forth and everything. Fast forward a couple of years later, now Africa is doing so well. Our music mm -hmm. and our films and everything are everywhere. Everyone is listening to Wizkid and DeVito and Burna Boy and everything, and they're playing that. When I was in uni, you would never hear an African song in a club. Oh, there, never. yeah. If you did, it means that the DJ just wanted to be funny or whatever. Yeah. But now you hear it all over and everybody's mm -hmm. like, oh, yo, I got to come to Africa. I got to do this. Now things have sort of switched around and it's a little ironic and it's a little amusing. But mm -hmm. everything happens in its time. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's just what happened for us. Living in Nigeria. So America taught me that we're all different and it's yeah. impossible that we're going to have the same values. Mm -hmm. So all good. I became understanding of it. I moved to Nigeria. I was there for five, six years. And I also learned, among we're all just different people, mm -hmm. but we can learn from each other. Yeah. Nigeria taught me the... I wouldn't say the hustle mentality, but Nigerians are a lot more on it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just by nature, yeah. I guess it's Nigeria. I think overtook India as one of the poorest countries recently, but it's also one of the like most fertile places for opportunity. Yeah. So they have the best of both worlds. It's up to you now to decide how how am I going to leverage this mm -hmm. and do that. So Nigeria taught me that you can't sit around and wait for things to to come to you. You All you happen. you have to go out there and make yeah. it and, and make it happen yourself. Which I believe I personally believe Ghanaians can learn a lot from. Definitely. Because say what you want about us, we're very peaceful, we're very hospitable, mm -hmm. we have amazing personalities, but if we're being real with ourselves, we are not go-getters. Yeah. And the sooner we realize that and the sooner we, we start to acknowledge it and say, okay, we have all these amazing qualities, how do we add some other things to it? The, the, the better for all of us. We spend all of our time in Ghana planning and forming, we love to form committee. Oh, so let's and form a talk. committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's form a committee and let's <laughs> let's talk next week. Yeah. You know? Oh, send me the proposal. I'll talk to my boss. And let's let's meet in two weeks, mm -hmm. and then we meet in two weeks. Ah, so we are discussing it, and then let's sort of. I mean, what is all of that? Yeah. Are you going to do it, or are you not going to do yeah. it? In Nigeria, we talk about things, and in two seconds, when we're talking about building this club, my partner Charles called me one day and said, "Hey, bro, what do you what do you think? Mm -hmm. Let's do this." And oh my, let's do it. When we're adding the rooftop, um, the restaurant section, called me and oh, what do you think? Okay, let's do it. Nigerians might not necessarily know how they're going to do it, but yeah. do you want to do it? Do you have that will? Mm -hmm. You will definitely find a way. way. So that's, mm -hmm. it's, it's part of what we're trying to bring, or I personally am trying to bring to Ghana, not even just in the club space, but in the film industry space specifically, because it's part of the reason I got into film. Yeah. It, it wasn't my background. Yeah. It wasn't my yeah. uh, training per se, mm -hmm. but I, I, was, I was still working in an accounting firm when I switched but the whole point was that I feel like in Ghana, we do this thing where all we do is point and like laugh or make fun. You know, ha ha ha, the music is not good. Ha ha ha, look mm -hmm. at how these, mm -hmm. look at how the video is doing it. But look at what's going on with Sako. Why are we always doing that? Why, like, rather than saying, oh, how, how, how are we also going to elevate our own people to, to reach the same way the Nigerians elevated their people? It didn't happen by luck. Yeah. They put that, that effort and into it, you know. Their film industry, it didn't happen by luck. They go to watch their own films. So for me, getting into the film industry, it's more, we all grew up saying, ha, 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 look at how bad the mm -hmm. film is. I can see the boom. I can see the mic. Oh, they made this mistake. They made that mistake. Fantastic. Problem no day. They've made mistakes. It's all good. That's what they had available to them at that point. Yeah. How about we as Ghanaians mm -hmm. going to decide, or more, how about we also going to improve our own films? Yeah. Because who's, who's going to do it for us? Exactly. Or are we going to do the films and expect that other people should like the films? If, if Ghanaians aren't the ones liking it, who in the world are we expecting yeah. to like our things for us? So rather than continue to just point and laugh, I figured 
let's all decide how are we going to make it better. So I also joined the acting industry. If anything, let them also laugh at me. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I will also be part of the people who are right, trying to raise. And as you can see, over the last couple of years, it's people who are doing incredible things with raising right. the profile of the music part, but the acting and everything. So, Omo, I won't lie. Like, we can all learn from everybody. Yeah. So that's what I gained from just having lived in different in different spaces and whatnot. Like, don't get me wrong, Nigeria has a lot of problems. I know. They have a right? lot of Everywhere. problems. Yeah. But they also have a lot of things that are going mm -hmm. well for them. So I, if, I'm sure they're also learning something from us, how to yeah. be more circumspect, how to, I guess, be more patient and make some decisions in certain ways. They, they can also learn a lot from us, but we can mm -hmm. also learn tons from them. Um, I love the fact that you touched on that um, comparison bit mm -hmm. that goes on lately in yes. our industry, yes. our creative industry. And I appreciate the fact that you're someone who loves to collaborate. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, I think that comparison thing is getting sickening. It is. If you it ask is, me. It is. Because every day, and Nigeria has done this, they came to learn for us, we had the owners. What about had Ghana? What? Yeah, you know. So, for you as a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. I know Nigeria has some local content policies that are really strong and going hard for yes, them. Yes, yes. yes. They really love to promote their yes, own. Yes, it's not so by luck. How, how did you get to, you know fusing as a Ghanaian, how were you accepted? Oh, as for that one, like I said, waiting for you, never go feel lose. Mm. If it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. There's absolutely nobody who can ever stop that. Um, and that's just the way it is. So with my case, it just so happened that that's what God decided. That's how your story should mm. pan out. It's not like me, myself, I'm able to say, oh, I'm so amazing and I, I did this all by myself. That's, that's not the case. I would, so I would you, never, you never faced any criticism in any way like, oh, he's a Ghanaian. Why are we giving him so many opportunities? No. I but mean, you see, that's the beautiful thing about Nigeria that we can all learn from, mm -hmm. man. If they decide that they're going to accept you and blow you, they will blow you. It doesn't matter yeah. where you're from. They will love you and they will do whatever you mm -hmm. want. As, but the thing is, they, they have to decide. So you yeah. can't be arrogant about it. I was fortunate because the people who took me in happened to, I went to Nigeria to work for Mnet. Okay. Um, that's, I, I yeah. was hosting, I was, I was an Mnet employee mm -hmm. for a, a little bit and I was also shooting a, a TV series with them. That was Hush. Hush, yeah. We shot for almost one year straight. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met RMD. He, he played my father in, in, in Hush. Okay. And we spent every day together for about one year, about 297 mm -hmm. days in like shoot, shooting straight back to back to back to back. So that obviously built a relationship. Yeah. And having somebody like that as your person, he sort of took me under his wing mm -hmm. and made sure that no matter what, I would always be okay. The people who brought me, the Mnet guys, took me under their wing. I had people like Moabudu, um, who took me under their wing. Um, Rogers of Fime. It's 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 crazy. That's why I keep saying it's not like I did it by myself. It's not like yeah. I sat there and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so yeah. amazing. I just happened to be fortunate enough to have people around me who were willing to take me in and to allow me to to, to flourish. And if the Nigerians allow you to to do that, you will be. Absolutely fine. Unfortunately, if they also decide that you no go blow, if they mm -hmm. decide that they are going to tear there's you down, you can do. there's also another matter altogether. Absolutely. So, um, I consider myself blessed. That yeah. That's just it's just that's just how my career went. Yeah. I got there and things happened to go well. The first show I did, Hush, ended up blowing up. I ended up doing some of the big films, The Chief Daddies and the rest. And then Netflix came to town, and then that also blew things up. So now Nigerian yeah. films are on Netflix, and I believe Chief Daddy was the second film that was big on Netflix because Lion, yeah. Lionheart was the first yeah. one and then Chief Daddy, and mm -hmm. then we started to go from there. Sugar Rush, all of these other things. Um, if it's your time, it's your time. You just, have to be, you just have to be grateful for it and decide, okay, how am I going to use what God has given me now and then sort of take it on from there. So I'm, I'm not going to claim responsibility for mm -hmm. that. I had a lot of people who were instrumental. I had a lot of people who helped me out, and God fortunately was on my side. So. Awesome, awesome. Um, many people shy, from, shy away from describing our movie industry here in Ghana, mm -hmm. as dead. They mm -hmm. say we are struggling. I mean, there's, there's room. There's more room for improvement. We are uh -huh. struggling. Uh -huh. I mean, people are talking about distribution and all that, the yes. Netflix deals and all that. But we see Nigerians, the likes of Ruth, um, Chini Love, leveraging mm -hmm. on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are putting all their movies out yes, there on yeah. YouTube and they are gaining that traction. Yes. So for that movie maker in Ghana or filmmaker in Ghana, mm -hmm who is eyeing that Netflix deal that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. What can be done to, let me say, pump some more energy into our movie industry or revitalize our movie industry here? I guess that's, that goes back to the point I was making about yeah. Ghanaians needing to acknowledge the fact that we need to be more assertive in the things that we mm -hmm. want. There's nobody in this world who's going to walk from their house and come and give you success and give it, oh yeah, Ghana, take it because, oh, because we're who? You think there's not other countries who want their, their yeah. film industry to do yeah. well? No one's going to come and give it to you. 
So Nigeria didn't get there because they were waving their hands and twiddling their thumbs. They got there because they had a dedication to doing the work, regardless of whether the opportunities were there. Like I said, when we filmed Chief Daddy, there was no African film on Netflix. It wasn't, there were no Nigerian films on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a thing. But we filmed it anyway. Spent a lot of money. Moabudu invested a lot of money to make sure that they would do it. When they did Wedding Party, Netflix wasn't showing African films. Yeah. But they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to shoot Wedding mm -hmm. Party. They came together, different units to say, oh, well, we're all going to come together and do this thing. And then that's how wedding parties and the rest of those things came about, which meant that when the opportunities opened, you say the luck is just when um, opportunity meets preparation. So they are prepared and then eventually the opportunity now came. So the doors opened and now, oh, my God, the doors are open. I have this content. I have Chief Daddy. I have Lionheart. I have this. Take it to Netflix. What we did was that we were waiting for the doors to open before we'll start doing mm -hmm. all the things. Mm -hmm. So now we're like, oh my God, the doors are open. What can we do now? It doesn't really work like that. So what I can say to the people who are trying to make a name for themselves right yeah. now, you can't wait for anybody. Nobody is going to come hand you success. Yeah. If you truly believe that you want to make great films, go out there and do it. You're not sure where you're going to get the money from. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Collaborate with other people. Find different ways. But my point is don't sit at home and, and believe that somebody is going to hand it to you. Yeah. It's never going to happen. So we have incredible talents. We have all these opportunities. We have everything that we need to build our own industry in our own way. Yes, we have our problems. Yes, we have distribution problems and whatnot. But those are just excuses. Like you said, other people are finding ways yeah. to leverage around the things that might not work mm -hmm. in your favor. So it's more about... Just focus on the fact that, do I want to do it? Mm -hmm. Don't form a committee. Don't form a committee and, and plan. <laughs> Enough don't, of the talking, don't, right? send a, don't, don't set a meeting for two months from now for us to discuss. Don't do yeah. that. Do I want to do it? Yes, yeah. I want to do it. I will gather some people. Tomorrow, we will start. We might not start filming tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe all we'll do is we'll start planning tomorrow. But tomorrow, we will start. If I have 10 CDs, I will put nine CDs in it. Yeah. I'll put my money where my mouth is and I will go for the best rather than spend six months planning and then last time we can't do it because mm -hmm. you know I've spoken to my boss and we no, it's, yeah. it's, it's timid and I don't believe being timid in business will get you anywhere, anywhere. Exactly. so if we want to be big on the world stage let's go for it mm -hmm. yeah there's been this conversation in the country about the creative industry and mm -hmm. sponsorship from the corporate side yes as you said, we shouldn't be timid. We have to make a move. People have mm -hmm. made that move, mm -hmm. but the sponsorship is still not coming. Yes. Corporate Ghana I agree. is interested I agree. in I sponsoring agree. creative I agree. stuff in this I agree. country. I what agree. do you think about that? What's the problem? Yeah, but when I say we're not serious, who do you think I'm talking about? It is corporate Ghana. No, no, no. Let's be real with ourselves okay. and let's call each other out. And maybe I'm going to get into trouble for this, but let's call each other out mm -hmm. on the things that we're doing and let's be real with ourselves. Nigerians aren't idiots for doing the things that they did to get them where they are. Yeah. So when they're successful, don't sit around and say, oh my God, why didn't this happen? No. GT Bank, it's a whole bank, it's a finance industry. Mm -hmm. They saw the potential in entertainment. They formed an entertainment wing in Dani TV, produced their own content, produced their own things, pushed it out. Yeah. I did rumor has it with them and I saw the structure and everything. I thought, this is fantastic. This is a bank mm -hmm. doing that. Access Bank. So that there is potential in, in entertainment. We will form Accelerate TV. We'll create our own content and yeah. we'll push it out there. UBA saw that there's entertainment opportunities. Mm -hmm. We will form Red TV, Red TV and we will do our own thing and yeah. we will go from there. UBA gives so much money to WizKid and whatnot mm -hmm. um, to do all sorts of different things. All the drink companies, all the people who invest and everything. It's not that they're idiots. It's that they see the potential. Is anybody going to sit here and tell me that there is a bigger potential than entertainment right now in the world? How? Between films, music, and arts, what is more captivating? What is, what is, what is a bigger draw for anything? What, is a, what has a bigger global um, um, approach? Yeah. So my wish is that us in Ghana, the businessmen who claim to be serious, who claim to want money and everything, let's not be naive and let's not pretend not to see the opportunities mm -hmm. that are right in front of us entertainment makes huge money so if you think that these big banks gta uba access bank all these people if you think that they're silly yeah. and maybe you are the one who know what you're doing no problem that's fine they will continue to thrive and we will continue to be here and we will make excuses yeah. so that's part of what we do with with fight night for instance we approach corporate bodies and we say listen come and see for yourself yeah Come and see. You come, what's going see on here? for yourself mm -hmm. what's going on, and then you decide if it's something that you want to be a part mm -hmm. of. And usually when they come and they see, oh, wow, you guys are actually putting in the effort. Wow, I think we actually want to, because they see the potential. Yeah. So it's up to us to see the potential in ourselves. 
We're always looking for, Canadians have incredible talent, man. What are we talking about? Our yeah. music, our food, our arts. We mm -hmm. have so much potential that with a little bit of investment, I'm not even talking $10 million type yeah. of thing. So I will invite corporate Ghana to be real with ourselves and to explore different opportunities. We've tried everything. We've done the, the farming. We've done all these other things. We've never truly supported entertainment. Yeah. So I'm looking for that one Ghanaian company who is going to make the kinds of moves that the GT banks and the UBAs who can also say, you know what? I see that there is business potential mm -hmm. in this and I'm also going to support it heavily. I know there's people doing some things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's nobody in Ghana who's supporting, but it is very hard in Ghana to get corporate support for the arts and for the creative side. But maybe, maybe, maybe we're not visionary enough to see the potential there. I can't force a business entity to see yeah. the potential in it. We will see it for ourselves and we will do it for ourselves. Once again, what we're doing at play, not just the club, for instance, we're deciding that we're also going to invest our own money mm -hmm. or not our money. We have partners and everything. We will find the investment, try to raise as much as a million dollars and push it towards the Ghanaian film industry specifically. If anybody wants to join us and bring two million more, absolutely, no problem. But that is our commitment to say we will also try to do it in this way. We won't wait for corporate Ghana. We won't wait for a single bank or anybody else. If they won't bring us the money, that's absolute, it's absolutely okay. We'll do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We welcome the help. We, we need the help. But we're not going to wait for anybody exactly. to see that there's potential. And then later on, they're going to, no, 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 no. So you don't believe it's a people problem in the sense that some people think we, the, um, let's say, creatives are the same people sabotaging themselves. Oh, that's absolutely true. No two ways. Mm -hmm. Like I said, let, let's, let's, let's call each other out and let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, let's not even <laughs> joke with us. We don't support our own. Yeah. We discuss the whole comparison and everything. We don't yeah. spend enough time supporting ourselves. So I'm not going to pretend like we're also not part of the problem. Yeah. We spend so much time pulling each other down. Mm -hmm. But it's all the same thing that I'm talking about. If we as a people, corporate Ghana, um, creative Ghana, yeah. everybody, if we can't figure out a way to see that there is money in entertainment and yeah. we can all come together to make that money or more. As for that one, I cannot force. No be me kill Jesus. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not here to save the world. I like that. I'm not here to save the world. So if yeah. people want to see it, let them see it. If people don't yeah. want to see it, we will stick to what we're doing mm -hmm. and we will just focus. If the government wants to help, fine. They don't want to help. Problem no day. We'll do it regardless. But the people are the problem. Yeah. We point, point, ha, ha, ha. Why is he not like this? Why is he not? What are you doing to help out? Mm -hmm. What did we just have people do the whole um, Accra to London um, trip? Trip. Road trip, yeah. Barely anybody talked about it. Yes, a couple of tweets mm -hmm. here and there and whatnot. But the reality is people don't realize that these opportunities have incredible ways to catapult not just the, the people but the country in an yeah. amazing way. When people were supporting Hilda Bassi for cooking, it's not because they like food that much. Mm -hmm. It's not because they even like Hilda per se that much. But what she was doing was embodying something that was bigger than just her. Yeah. It's a way to say, this country, we can all come together. And you saw everybody troop and everything. Not because they're idiots. They and know what's in it. They know what's in it for mm -hmm. them. And now because of that, every day, Guinness World Record, they held or something. Yeah. Because yes, because yeah. there, there was effort put into it. We had a golden opportunity to do something like that and we missed it. Problem no day. Mm -hmm. There will be another opportunity. So Ghanaians, when you have an opportunity, I beg you, Support your own people, man. I don't know who you're waiting to come and support. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you're waiting for to come yeah. and support. But if we have an opportunity, let's just support our own people. Whatever comes of it, we'll accept it like that. But if we don't support, it's, it's ridiculous that we keep expecting mm -hmm. the world to come and support us. We're not supporting ourselves. Yeah. So, I mean, Maoli Gavo as a brand. Yes. How do you ensure sustainability and relevance? Hey, Godo. <laughs> That's tough, but I think it's, it's about consistency and dedication to remaining who you are. Mm -hmm. So like I said, the things that I think, the things that I'm saying here, I've, I've felt forever and I don't think I'm ever going to change. I believe collaboration is key. Mm -hmm. I believe that you should never wait for anybody to come and hand you success. So I'm never going to do that. Yeah. I will keep doing things the way I know how to do mm -hmm. it. And if I fail, problem no day. I wouldn't be the first, I wouldn't be the last, but I will at least try to do it my own way. So that's, that is what I believe has been key to my success. I can only speak for myself. I don't know how other people are going to do it, but consistency and just that dedication to continue to, you know, want to, want to improve. Mm -hmm. Because it's not really up to you. Yeah. It's not, it's not up to you. Sometimes people do their best and they're no more. It's just extent. not how many, how yeah. many of our artists were super big back I in the know. day. <laughs> and now I mean, there's nobody demanding like I that. Know, yeah. say, oh, yeah. We're doing yeah. you guys and everything. But at the end of the day, you can't rely on what other people are going yeah. to do. You do your part. If it works mm -hmm. out for you and that was your story, sure. 
it's possible that it might not work and that it's just not your story. It doesn't mean you failed in life, but at least you tried in your own way. So I'm not too worried about that. Mm -hmm. I'll just keep doing me. For as long as people want to accept me for who I am and they think it's relevant and they want to keep putting me on that, I wouldn't say pedestal, but to put me mm -hmm. in a space where I'm considered that person, yeah. absolutely fine. The day they decide that they don't need me like that again, mm -mm. the problem no day. They say, monkey no fine, but your mother like, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll go back to, to my mother's house <laughs> and I'll... And I, <laughs> you know, please like mama's house. <laughs> I'll go back to my mother's house and I'll drink, I'll drink tea and I'll relax myself. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's not a problem. I'm grateful for the love. I absolutely love the fact that there's people who support me when they don't even know me. People who are like fans. And it's crazy that I even have someone yeah. like fans. So I'm always going to be grateful for that. But the same way they came, if they decide to go, there's nothing that I can do about that. So I'm, I'm just going to say I'm grateful for them. If they stay forever, I mean, God bless. What have been your biggest lessons so far? It's never really up to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's never really up to you. And this, I'm always waiting to see for this industry, waiting to see for this life. <laughs> like, it's not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. We keep doing this thing where it's all about, oh my God, my life, oh my God. Right? Mm -hmm. It'll be only you get a problem. You're not the only one with a problem. Yeah. We are all, every, every single person is facing some level of yawa in one way or the other. So I, I use this analogy that life is like a, it's like a tap as dropping mm -hmm. L's, like losses. And everybody, we're all in line with our own little calabash. And when we get there, we're not sure the type of L that's going to drop into mm -hmm. our calabash. It might be financial. It might be emotional. It might be health. It might be all sorts of things. So when you get there and then your L drops, you look at it, oh, it's a financial problem. Oh yeah, I guess this is my own burden. You walk away, oh, it's a, I guess this is my own burden. It's not up to you. You can only do your best and what life will give you, you will, you will take it mm -hmm. and then we go. For, when I was starting to build in dollars one to six, I didn't think I was gonna end at dollars one to 14 for six because yeah. it wasn't up to me. I didn't control COVID. I didn't have anything to do with the pandemic or the lockdown mm -hmm. or the this or the that. I was sitting in my own cool corner and then you posted COVID-19 <laughs> and <laughs> here we are. Yeah. So my biggest lesson truly, do what you can and then the rest or more. Now God go decide. Yeah, God go decide yeah. everything will happen to you. And, and, and it's, it's worked out for me yeah. and it also hasn't worked out for me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. for, for every success that you see, there's probably 10 rejections mm -hmm. and 10 mm -hmm. failures and whatnot. Um, but probably not, I wouldn't be the first person to fail. I will not be the last. Definitely. Hopefully failure won't be the end for me. Hopefully success will be the end of my story. So continue to try mm -hmm. and then we go from there. But stop forming committees. <laughs> <laughs> the talking part is yes. where you don't like. Are you just it. I mean, but um, let's get real. Fame can be chaotic. Of course. Quite yeah, chaotic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And considering your reserved nature, mm -hmm. how do you manage to stay sane, protecting your mental space? Fortunately for me, a lot of people probably don't believe or believe, but I'm, I'm super in, introverted, mm -hmm. which means I'm able to come out and do my job and able to come out and host in front of thousands of people and do all of those things yeah. and be that. But after that, I'm, I'm running back to my room to go sit in my corner and like either read or watch some anime or do something random. Um, because that's just a way for me to recharge mm -hmm. and that's just a way for me to withdraw into myself. So my friends and my family, they're sort of like my peace. You know, my wife, my baby, my ev like everything. It's just a way for me to withdraw. From so I don't live in the industry. Yeah. I work in the industry. industry. So the industry is not life my life. Exactly. The industry is not my life. Yeah. Which is why I say no matter what happens with the fans or whatever, that's a place that I work. Last night, I will still go home to my mm -hmm. baby. Still go home to my Cyber beautiful daughter. Cyberbullying doesn't move you? I'm, I'm human. So it's not like it... it um, some things won't affect you. I won't lie. When you, when you see, there's times where I've trended all over Africa and people saying all sorts yeah, of different things. I mean, and I mean, those were, I think your time in Nigeria though. Yeah, some stories for that came multiple, up. For multiple, mm -hmm. all sorts of, mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my corner somewhere and people tell me, bro, you're trending in. So yeah. I'm just like, what the <laughs> hell is happening? But what you learn is that, like I said, it's not up to you. Yeah. Of course, some things go chook you small, mm -hmm. but um, I'm not going to lie and say it doesn't get to me. What I do say is, it's not going to affect my life in one way or the other. How many actors does, does Nicolas Cage? Yeah. I don't really like him that much. Oh, really? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't really like him that much. I, I can see all sorts of, I think he's this, I think mm -hmm. he's that. Mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage doesn't know me. Yeah, there's that. He doesn't know me from anywhere. No matter what I think of him, he will still always be a multi-award winning, million dollar making, Definitely. whatever. My opinions of him have no bearing on his life whatsoever. Yeah. Whether I like him, whether I don't like him, he's already done his things, he's already mm -hmm. been successful, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I look at it the same way, there's going to be somebody sitting in Kaswa or in Lagos or in this thing who is saying, oh, this guy will type with your data and this guy something, something. Problem no day. It's all good. 
as long as you're not paying my bills, or as long as you're not affecting my life in any particular way, I think you should be allowed to do that. Yeah. Yes, you might say that. Yes, it might hurt me, mm -hmm. but it's not really going to affect my life in any in, sure. in any way, shape, or form. So I wouldn't say I'm not moved, but I acknowledge that it's it's irrelevant to my mm -hmm. real life. Social media is not real life. So as long as I can go back to my family and hug my daughter and kiss her, problem no day. That's awesome. I mean, you mentioned RMD Richard yes. Mofedomijo yes. as one of your mentors. Yes. in the film industry yes. but when we come to the business aspect mm -hmm. who do you look up to <sighs> probably my older brother first of all okay sebastian he's um we both study the same things business finance so like my dad my dad is the one my dad is a finance person so okay. that's how we all came up but i feel like maybe he's the one who taught me that dedication to I wouldn't say excellence, but mm -hmm. your eye for it. Mm -hmm. If you just have to have that, go go get it. So I have other people, one of my business partners in this, Lawrence Aite. Um, it's just a bunch of people who inspire me to just want to continue to do better. My main partner in this establishment, that's Charles of Play, um, Charles of Palakir from yeah. Nigeria and everything. Also another huge inspiration because despite being a young as the I'm never going to stop. I'm always going to keep going forward, mm -hmm. which is how we ended up building this space. When we were building, I won't lie, everybody said, why are you making it so big? Ghanaians don't like big clubs. Yeah. Why are your ceilings so tall? You, you won't be able, what, why are you spending so much money on lights? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing a rooftop? Why are you doing, you know, everybody had all these reasons why we shouldn't yeah. do it in this particular way. Nobody thought we would open in time. Nobody. Everybody thought, why, 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 why? And we said, hey, no problem. How long did it take to put this up? Um, it took about five months okay. to do everything, wow. but we did most of it in two months. That's impressive. Yes. So it took one month to finish the, um, we, I have videos of how the whole place was set mm -hmm. up. We built for about five months. The first three months were horrible because we were mm -hmm. fighting all these different problems and everything. Yeah. But so the actual work took about two months. So everything that you see here was erected in less than two months. Wow. Um, but again, nobody thought it was possible because not supposed to be done like that i know right but i'll tell you this anything is possible if you rely on the fact that we all have let me make a small confession For when i built this particular place i had to bring in a lot of employees from from outside let, okay. me, let, let me be honest you know why you had a bad experience with the local ones let me put it like this when we were building sometimes some of my ghanaian um artisans the the construction workers mm -hmm. almost by 2 p.m they closed they've gone home wow yeah, I can show up by 2 p.m. You know, we say they, 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 they buff already, they shower. Yeah. He's, he's already As worn his shirt. Work he's going then, home. Uh -huh. 2 p.m., he's already finished. He's finished his work for the day. He's going home. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, how? <laughs> <laughs> God, oh, you guys are going to kill me. <laughs> then eventually we had to invest and bring in a couple of other people. We still kept the same Ghanaian workers, yeah. but just to show them that you guys need to be. And these other people came. I brought some people from Nigeria. They, they would work till 10 p.m. sometimes if they needed to. Just to show that if you truly want to get it done, yeah. you have to you have to just be gingered. Yeah, that's 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 all. Um, so it's more just that for me than anything else. But everybody should see what they're good at and find ways to to leverage on it. That's all. So you touched on the building part. Mm -hmm. How much money went into this? <laughs> <laughs> um, like the exact number? Uh, 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 approximation, sort of. Hmm. Let me put it like this. We spent over half a million dollars. Okay. Mainly because, not, not because that was the plan per se. Like mm -hmm. I said, when we started, the economy was one thing. Yeah. So it probably would have cost me less than half if, we, if everything had stayed the same. But yeah. to go from dollars to one to six to dollars to one to 14.6, I used to buy cement at 40 something cities. Mm -hmm. I think I ended up buying it at 110 cities. Do you know what it is? We buy one bag of cement for 40 cities yeah. one day and 110 100, cities yeah. the other day. Yeah. It's, it's um, insane. Yeah. So that obviously ballooned our costs. Um, but that's just putting the, the whole thing together. You've seen our light system. Yeah. You've seen the amount of metal. Mm -hmm. Take one thing and go ask the price of that metal in town and then use that and just calculate how much All you right. think. Um, so we, we, we tried to put our money where our mouths are. We said we wanted to do something big. It's not about, I won't lie, when we started, we didn't know where the money was going to come from. Um, we just knew that we were going to get it done. So we spent... Quite a lot, not just on building, but on promotions. You saw in December, we had almost everybody here. We had to do all these activations and have yeah. the Dave Chappelle's and the Wiz and the Iron Stars and everybody come through and have all these big events mm -hmm. and everything. Do you know what it is to open a club and to start throwing huge events from the yeah. your marketing budget, 
flying people in and everything. So I can't even talk about the numbers because s s apart from the building, what we spent on just doing everything properly has been something else. But like I said, we were fortunate. I have incredible partners and um, we all found a way to do it, to do it together. So unfortunately, I, I can't give you an actual number. I can't say we spent more than half a million dollars yeah. um, in our efforts and we will continue to spend um, and let's see what God will do for us. Awesome. I mean, touching on the part where the attitude of the local artisans put you over the point in time. Yes. Shuffling between, let's say, Nigeria, Ghana, working around, mm -hmm. how do you tend to manage this place along with your movie life or let me say acting life and family? I won't lie, it's, it's, it's taken a toll. So if anybody really? has noticed, I, I actually haven't done any proper filming in about over a year. If people so when was, I think I watched, was it Single and Not Searching? So Single Not Searching is actually the very last thing that I did okay. before okay. I embarked on this project, mm -hmm. um, which was another incredible project from Michael Jabba and the rest of them. Um, so that was the very last thing I did. And then I started doing this. My plan was to continue to do this and to just be going back and forth. But if you've ever done any business, you know that you can't know, be somewhere yeah? and be building. I learned that One the hard way. One has to suffer in the way. You can't be somewhere and yeah. be throwing money and think yeah. that everything is going to go on. Yeah. So f like I said, the first three months we were messing around a little. It was when I came to Ghana, I used to come and sit on site with the workers and pull up a chair and just sit down the whole day. Last time we go day here together. If you mm -hmm. then there, we'll see. And then people stopped leaving at 2 p.m. People started doing their yeah. work and everything. So it's been impossible to run this properly and still have my normal acting career. Something had to give. Um, but I did spend five, six years building an incredible career and I was able to do so much. Yeah. So maybe it's time to just spend some time mm -hmm. doing some other things because I still act, I still do the films. I, I, I run my own production company. Mm -hmm. I collaborate and we produce our own films. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, so we started about six years. I started in Nigeria. My oh, second okay. year in Nigeria, okay. we formed a production company. Again, not alone. I formed it with my brother and a couple of other people. Mm -hmm. um, so one step at a time, you can't do everything. I now have a wife and a baby. Yeah. So that also takes a lot of my time. It's impossible to do everything at the same time. So I'm just taking it one day at a time. Currently, I'm focusing on this business, which has been yeah. open for about six, seven months. We're trying to get it to a space where I don't need to be here all the time, but um, it's sort of running on autopilot. And by God's grace, we're, we're, we're gonna be there very soon. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Um, as to how I'm balancing it, Tomo, I don't think I'm doing a very good yeah. job yet. It's, yeah. it's insane. Um, most days my wife wants to beat me, but <laughs> last, last week we'll survive. Definitely. How, how's your net worth looking like? Liquidity, liquidity right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all of this. Play Club has to speak Look for itself. So the thing is, Play Club is one of the, there's Play Club, there's mm -hmm. Lupita. I have a bunch Lupita's of different real estate investments sure. and everything that we're doing. So mm -hmm. in terms of liquidity, I've, like I said, I put my money where my mouth is. Yeah. Um, but in terms of assets, it's looking, it's looking pretty amazing right now. Mm -hmm. So I still have my liquidity and I still have now a bunch of different, I have my film production company. I have this, I have the restaurant upstairs. I have a couple of other businesses that um, by God's grace will all thrive. So I have put, Ghana say, I throw leg. <laughs> yeah, I've thrown my leg. So we'll <laughs> see, we'll see, we'll see what, what happens from there. Awesome. But based on the way the economy is and everything, it's not like I have, a million dollars sitting at home. Yeah. If you get some million dollar for me, we won't put my pocket and say, I don't mind. <laughs> Definitely. No, no, I, mean, I don't mind at touch. all. Yeah, I'm I'm I don't mind at all. Happens, it's by God's grace, um, we're, we're, we're still looking very good. I'm not yeah. going to pretend like, because um, that would be disingenuous of me. I, mm -hmm. I, I am very grateful for the things that have happened to me. I'm very grateful for everything that I happen to have right now and everything that God has blessed me with. Mm -hmm. So let me not lie and be like, oh, Nothing day. Yeah. Something small day. day, but yeah. But we need more. So if you get some for me, I beg you. Well that one yeah, I'll hit you up. Yeah. I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you my momo number. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. I look forward to that one. What, what has been that role of education in your career? Because we see so many creatives who are complacent. They just yeah. keep putting the work and I've been relaxed. Mm -hmm. on the education side. Yes. They don't get educated. Yes. They are just where they are, nothing really. What do you think, how important is education in, in this industry? I, I would not have been able to do anything without, um, without that level of education. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, in my experience, I wouldn't say it's, it's not possible, but you have to invest in education. Yeah. You don't, nobody's saying you have to go and do PhD or masters, or you don't even have to do university if you don't want to, but you have to educate yourself in mm -hmm. one way or the other. That, that one, I don't think there's any way around it. 
for me, what has helped me is the fact that I, I, I do have a, ba a background in computer science and finance and all these other things, yeah. which means that for my businesses, I do my own records, I do my own accounting, things, I do my yeah. own financial planning, I do my own business strategies, financial modeling, I do all of those things myself. I spend half the day looking at mm -hmm. Excel sheets. Um, I happen to have an incredible network. I told you my brother, um, my partner Lawrence, we literally sit down and we do our own, we, we do our own risk analysis, we do all of these different things by ourselves because we happen to have that knowledge mm -hmm. to be able to handle it by ourselves. Um, my partner, um, Charles, did biomedical science. He has, I, say, I believe, a law degree. He has all these other degrees that inform how he's able to move in life. So it's, it's not just about gem. Sometimes you see people and you see the bottles and you see the gem yeah. and you believe that, or you see an actor and you believe that. No, the, the reality is people have invested in themselves. You see people now, I believe Abeko Santana went and got it. I don't know if it's a, I, I saw he got some degree from yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I think he's doing his master's in marketing as I well. Saw, yeah. I, I saw yeah. that, yeah, people invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. Again, he's not an idiot. Yeah. He knows the value that he's getting from all these mm -hmm. things. He knows that no matter, and he was huge before he went to do all of those things. But he knows, Samini is doing a course, I believe. Yeah, he's graduated recently. He just, he Project just graduated. Management. Yeah. It's, he's not a silly person. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's mm -hmm. doing. Samini is one of our biggest, but he still found the time to take a break and to go do yeah. this. So I will never encourage people to not invest in education. That is a very silly thing to do. However, no go just they follow school or save mm -hmm. not school alone because mm -hmm. it, especially in Ghana, what we teach in school sometimes is not very practical. Yeah. We we teach rote learning. So we're teaching what is an I? An I is what is a computer? <laughs> a computer is that's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. But if we can learn to teach people to I guess to survive more, maybe th but that's a discussion for another day. Educational curriculum, how we yeah. can also inspire the youth to think outside of the box. Critical thinking and all that. You guys are working in media and you're doing mm -hmm. amazing things. Mm -hmm. You have cameramen, you have sound technicians, yeah. you have colorists, you have all these things that can pay incredibly high wages yeah. if we invest in it. Not everybody has to be a doctor, not everybody has to be a lawyer. Somebody can become the best sound engineer in, in, in Africa. You can be the best lighting technician, you can be the best cinematographer, you can be a visual artist if you want. There's so many other avenues that we might want to explore outside of the regular ones. Um, so, but hopefully we'll get there. Like I said, no, we make your Jesus. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't save the world, man. I think like, that's your favorite quote, right? Me. Yeah, man, because I can't, I, can't, I can't kill myself. <laughs> I can't come and kill myself. I'm not here to solve the world's problems. It's not like I have the answers to the world's problems. Yeah. I have my perspective mm -hmm. based on my life experiences and yeah. what I believe life has shown me. Um, but that's whether that's going to save the world. That's not really my business. So I can, uh, I will talk my own. If you believe me, you take out. If you don't believe me, to no take out. So, I mean, what's that philosophy you live by? Just that one philosophy yeah. that, no, that's literally it. It's not always about you. Mm -hmm. And my dad taught me that. One of the biggest pieces of advice he gave me, he said, Marley, you have to learn to deal with disappointments. And I carry that with me everywhere that I go mm -hmm. because the disappointments will come. Yeah. You are lying to yourself if you believe that they're not going to come. Mm -hmm. They will come in whatever way, shape, or form. And when they do come, it's important for you not to say, oh, my God, woe is me. What you can say is, wow. I guess this is my own portion. Mm -hmm. And then you take it like that. Because at the end of the day, I'll give you a practical example. If you saw me today and you said hi to me and maybe I didn't mind you or I did it something, you walk away thinking, hmm, my God, Marley doesn't like me. He's snobbish. I wonder, Marley, yeah. yeah. I wonder what is he not like about me? Mm -hmm. what, what did he not disagree? There's something about, you realize you're saying me, 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 me. What makes you think it has anything to do, to with, do with you? To do with you, yeah. What makes you think you even factored into the Probably equation? Probably you're dealing with something that I have so no much. idea. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it's not always going to be about us. We yeah. love to make this, uh, all the life's problems are we, me, 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 me. Oh, my, my, my brothers, my sister, sometimes it's not you. <laughs> so you can't take things personal. The yeah. disappointments will come. Mm -hmm. When they come, you trust it and then you move forward. And you just pray that it's not the kind of disappointment that will hurt your life or that will be too damaging. But like I said, that's also not up to you. I just had a friend who lost his father. That's Jimmy Odukoya. He was in the Woman King. Yeah, yeah. Um, he just lost his father. Oops. He just lost his stepmother before, Whoa. and he had just lost his his, his first his um, natural mom in a plane crash. And this is one human being. Whoa. You lose your mom in a plane crash. You lose your stepmother, and you lose your That's father. That's a lot to take. So in. people saw you see him. Yes, he's in the Woman King. He's with Viola Davis and everything and everybody. But the reality is, everybody has to have some level. Look, you, can you imagine the strength that it takes mm -hmm. to have all of this happen to you and to still yeah. move on and whatnot. So those are the people who inspire me in life because I, and I still see him strong and still moving and everything. Absolutely. And I'm thinking, my God, I haven't even How experienced. How does he do it? Thank you so much. So it's not always about you. Mm -hmm. You will have your problems. 
you better take them because you definitely don't want to wish for other people's problems. You yeah. do not know what other people are going through. It might be way worse than what you're going I know, through. Right? So take your own the way God give them I to mean, you. I, I mean, that, that, that analogy where they said we are all to throw our issues in a bin or yes. basket. When you see others, you just quietly pick yours. You go, you go take your and go home. Yeah. You go package them and say, Baba, I beg you, I'm going home. You know, no, right? it's crazy. It's crazy. I won't lie. People I, um, are going through it. I, 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 I'm, always, I, I'm always humbled by what some other people have had to endure. And I think to myself, my goodness. Like, yeah. let's be grateful for what we have exactly and then whatever god decides will be our path we'll, we'll, we'll take it sure, from there definitely what mm -hmm. is that one advice you're going to give anyone mm -hmm. who aspires to equally be a creative entrepreneur or go into business <sighs> hmm. one piece of advice yeah my dreams would say life no get rehearsal there's only one life that we're ever going to live. Mm -hmm. It is impossible that you should ever allow someone else to determine how you are going to live your life. It doesn't mean don't take advice. It doesn't mean don't listen to other people. You can't allow somebody else to determine it. So whatever it is that you're going to do, make sure it is that that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then you do your best. If it works out, if it doesn't work out, you know that you used your life in the way that you wanted to use it because it's your life. Everybody else has their own problems. If today you're here, today, tomorrow you're not there, the question is, did you use your life in the way that you wanted to do it? When I was quitting and I was going to do acting, everybody thought I was crazy. People used to call my parents, is Marley okay? Like, is he... Because again, back then to leave, I had a... I was in one of the top four accounting companies to leave that and say, he's going to do acting. You know, that's how he's... He's, yeah. he's doing what? Acting. Mm -hmm. What? Like, you know, is he crazy? Mm -hmm. Is he this and that? But the reality is, the fulfillment and everything that I was getting from doing my accounting job, sitting in that office doing, I wouldn't say doing nothing, but my spirit didn't connect to that. Now, if people who love it, great for you. Yeah. The people who don't love it, why should I be doing it? Because those are the expectations from other people. I decided that I can do something else that I might also enjoy, I might be good at, and I might use that to create a different impact. So somebody might use law to create an impact, somebody might use medicine to create an impact. I just happen to be in the path of using the creative side to create my own personal impact. So I'm gonna live your own life. Yeah. Do what you go feed do. Mm -hmm. And then whatever comes out of it, I guarantee it's not up to you. People don't succeed because you succeed because that's what God wanted to happen. So you do your part and then that's pretty much it. I I don't have the answers for anybody but from as a general rule of thumb, do what you can. Yeah. The rest of it is not it's not it's not up to you. But don't let anybody else decide for you because when life is all over the question is, did you do what you wanted to do with your, yeah. with your life? That's all. I mean, it's, it's been amazing tapping into your wealth of knowledge today. Hey, no be small matter. <laughs> Say wealth of knowledge. <laughs> if, if Professor. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 if, no, no. If I don't remember anything at all, uh -huh. one thing that's going to resonate is not always about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, that's going to yeah. stick with me for yes. the longest haul. Yes. And no be me kill Jesus. That Maybe. one. Huh. No, be no boss <laughs> kids or now somebody else. If you say we just pay him. price, yeah, we just pay price for him. So it's all good. We can't They'll take. Die for you. Don't be we killed Jesus. Jesus already took all, all of our all. all of our burdens, and he already went to die. I should I should also go and die. Can for something already do for yeah? me. You don't do one for me. No, I, uh -huh. I beg you. I, I beg all. you. He died for my sins that, already. Let mm -hmm. me let me enjoy life in peace. Yeah, please. definitely, definitely. But like, I mean, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed every bit. Thank you for having of this me. conversation. Thank, thank you. Thank for you. Me. I appreciate you guys. Huh? You're welcome to our next fight night. I will. I will definitely make it. Yes. I'll be here. I mean, thank you so much once again. You're very welcome. And thank you for watching and making a day with us. But till I come your way again, this has been Celebus with Molly Gavo and my name as always is Amelie Josu. Stay safe.